Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone just clap unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is here. How do I know that? Because he says that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is in the amiss. So tonight you're welcome to our midweek service. I'm excited and I'm sure you are too. Before we start our service, we would like to start off with um, um, just a word of prayer. So wherever you are with me, let's join our faith together and pray together tonight. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, O oh God, for giving us another opportunity, another day, O oh God, into your wonderful presence. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you will visit us tonight. We pray for an open heavens over the service. In the name of Jesus, we pray, let your kingdom come. Let your sovereign will alone be done on earth as it is tonight. Take control. Be the center, O oh Lord, of everything we do. We give you all the praise and we thank you that you will show us your glory tonight in every aspect of the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Just one more time. Just appreciate the Lord in this place. He is here with us. Hallelujah. 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 
At this time, we'd like to invite the anointed psalmist to lead us into a time of worship. Open up and be a part of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's appreciate them as they come to us.
Welcome back, Reverend Margaret. Amen. Hallelujah. What a sweet, sweet presence in this place. Just tune in and stay tuned in to the Holy Spirit. He has something even gracious and magnificent for us this evening. Just allow yourself wherever you are to be touched by God. Expect him. And indeed, he will touch us in Jesus' name. Please, wherever you are, please just join me as we make and we take our prophetic declaration this evening. Please, kindly lift up your hands for me, please. I declare that the Lord is my shepherd, my shield and my strength. You, O oh Lord, have called me by name. And knew me before I was born. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pull down every satanic opposition. And I silence every voice speaking against my progress. Your word says that death and life lies in the power of the tongue. Death and life lies in the power of my tongue. Today I speak life. And I declare that I will not remember the former things. Neither would I consider the things of old. I lift my eyes above the pain. Loss. Failure. Shame. And disappointments of my past. I focus on the new things. That you will do in my life this year. As you make a way in my wilderness. And rivers in my deserts. I embrace new health. New strength. New peace. New relationships. New power. New wealth. New doors of favor and new commitments to serve God in the area of 
intercession, evangelism, and discipleship. Teach me your ways. Grant me an excellent spirit. As I break new ground spiritually, physically, financially, and socially, I will not die this year. I will not be put to shame. I will not fail. I will finish very well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Please, you may take your seats in heavenly places. Amen and amen. Once again, if you've just joined us, you are welcome to our midweek service. This is Christ Church, in, Christ Church International. Hallelujah. And on behalf of Bishop James and Pastor Justin, I'd like to welcome you once again to our service. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Hallelujah. With your notepads and your iPads, everything that you can take notes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Once again, I'm privileged and honored to welcome to the pulpit the servant of the Lord, the general overseer of Christ Church International. Tonight, please help me welcome Bishop James Hansen Saki as he brings us the word, God's word tonight. Hallelujah. You can do it better. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Welcome him as he comes in Jesus' name. Glory be to Jesus. Amen and amen. We thank God for tonight. We thank him for his mercies in the name of Jesus. Let's, let's just lift our voices and begin to pray in the Holy Spirit for a few minutes in Jesus' name. Mosi karaba shaba raba sakata raba ba. Le karaba zimroshte karaba la baba. Ye nereba sobrianda la ba shakata raba la baba. Yake la basi brianta la baba shimro kanda la baba ye kala basi murianda la basha bore bala bala baba yes Lord Jesus we thank you we give you the praise we give you the glory we give you the honor we are grateful Lord Jesus for your message in the name of Jesus kanda lele be shabora bala baba yake la barande le baba sti Maria katala baba. Ya tele babo shibriyanda la baba Ya kasaburiyante le babo shibriyanda la baba Ya beise morande le beshabura bala baba Father we thank you in the name of Jesus We give you the praise and the glory We honor you for tonight we ask that you anoint the teaching of your word in the name of Jesus. We pray let the heavens be opened. Let my hearers be blessed. Let them receive the sound teaching of the word of God. Let them be able to run with it in their lives and in their service of God. We thank you tonight that all demons assigned against our service have lost their way. We command them to be cast out in the name of Jesus. We pray that every hindrance to the clarity of the word be cast out in Jesus' name. We pray that the word will come with power and authority to come as a double-edged sword that will penetrate and divide asunder soul and spirit in the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. We pray for divine security and protection over my life and over this atmosphere in the name of Jesus and in the homes vehicles and everywhere that anyone is listening to us let them be covered in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you that you inspire relevant examples from your word to bless your people in Jesus name amen, amen. hallelujah please put your hands together one more time for the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says clap your hands all ye people shout unto God with a voice of triumph amen amen 
Indeed, Jesus is the only one that can satisfy our soul. Amen. People can satisfy your flesh, but it is only Jesus that can satisfy your soul. And the scripture says, just as the body without the soul is dead, so faith without works is also dead. So the one that satisfies your soul is more important than the one that satisfies your flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your seats in Jesus' name. Glory be to Jesus. Tonight I want to share with you on the message I've entitled, The Fruit of Hard Work. Amen. Amen. The Fruit of Hard Work. I know many times I have taught about work. But sometimes the same message can come in another way. That the Lord still wants to emphasize on the fact that his people must learn to work, must love work, and must understand the principles of working, especially working hard and working honestly. Amen. Jesus tells us that we are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. It means that wherever we are, we are supposed to shine the light of God in us. And one of the reasons why we must shine the light is not for us. Jesus, when he said that, he says, so that your father in heaven will be glorified. That means that when we portray the light in us are the good works in us, the fruit of the spirit, the nature of God in us that must be put on display is the light of God. And one of them is work. Somebody shout work. Now, we know that the scripture tells us that right from the beginning, of creation, the Bible says that God, in order to create this earth, if we want to understand success and we want to understand fruitfulness and fulfillment, we need to understand the principle of first beginnings or first mention. That when it came to this earth and for things to work and for things to be created, God came and worked. Many people think that creation was just something by the snap of a finger that God did. But the Bible tells us he worked. So God came on the earth and worked for six days, according to the Bible. And I would choose to believe the Bible than any scientist who was not there when God did these things. And so God said in his word that he came to work. Amen. And I will believe him. Glory be to Jesus. And he came to work for six days. He worked for six days. And then he rested on the seventh day. Make sure that the, the time you take a rest, you have worked. A lot of people want to rest and they have not worked. A lot of people want to go on holiday and ask myself, what are you breaking from when you have not worked? Otherwise, you will go on holiday and you will come back tired. Because you don't know how to work and therefore you won't know what you are resting from. The Bible tells us God works. So that means work itself has been weaved into creation. And so God worked and then we see the results of his work. Thousands of years later, we have seen the results of God's work. It means that if you want to see anything of lasting value, you must commit yourself to work towards it. Because God worked towards the earth. In fact, he worked over us. He toiled over a lump of clay to create you and me. To create your eyes and every part of you that you admire so much today. God worked out at it. And he worked so much that he created a manual and put in all the spare parts. That's a lot of work. And the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms that every part of our bodies, every part of us have been put in a book, Psalm 139. It says it's in a book. Every part of us. That means that God worked. And just like we do, manufacturers do today, they work. And then it's hard work to actually put the content of what you have created, the spare parts, how the thing will work. You put all in a book, in a manual. That's another work. If you have written a book before, as I have, you understand it's hard work. You sit for days writing. One chapter can take you a long time because this one, you are not speaking. You are writing. You are thinking to put things together. And then you sometimes will subject it to other people to come back and criticize the chapter. (laughs) 
And then they come back and tell you, but you can change it. The wording, the language here could be this. Editors can go around the whole thing. So it's a lot of work. And then he also gave us his word, the Bible. And he put in the manual for our conduct. This is work. And I'm going somewhere tonight with you. That God weaved all this into creation. You also realize that moments after that, when he created Adam and Eve, and that becomes a template for all humans because Adam and Eve serve as the template for our conduct and all humans. The Bible says when he created Adam, he gave him work to do. He put him in the garden. He had work to produce and he said that he should till it. To till means to work hard, to work it out. And he says he should till the ground and then when he tills the ground or works the ground, the ground will yield crops. For him to enjoy the fruit of his labor. So before a wife was given to him, he was given work to do. Work comes first. Hallelujah. As I've always said, nothing great is achieved without pains and labor. If we want shortcuts in life, we will not be able to attain excellence and fruitfulness of eternal value. Anything you work hard at today, anything you want to achieve, don't aim for things that only endure for a short time. Genuine and honest labor results in work that produces fruits that last for a long time. One day Jesus said that we should go, he has called us, that we should go and bear fruit, that our fruit should remain. He wants the thing to remain. When God worked and produced this earth, this one still remains. Hallelujah. Whatever he did is still there. It's a result of hard work. Now I want us to turn our Bibles now to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and the verse number 10 to 12. The apostle Paul, we admire him so much. He's someone I really admire when I read my Bible. I like all the prophets, but Paul is a very unique character I like to read a lot about. And he's somebody I look forward to that one day when I appear in heaven, I want to see him. Apart from Jesus Christ, I want to see. Amen. I want to see Paul and ask him a few questions. Now, but he was an excellent apostle. He did well. He succeeded. He broke through. We still talk about him today. But I want you to understand that he, he taught something. You know, sometimes when we teach these, these things, people just think, oh, church should be all about salvation and the blood and redemption and all of that. So any other thing encouraging or motivating people to do other things, they just think we are motivational speakers. <laughs> Inside the word of God, there is also instruction on work. So it is not only the preserve of motivational speakers, but it is also the preserve of pastors to teach the congregation on the qualities of work. Now in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, even while we were with you, Paul was teaching here, we gave you this command. Church, listen tonight. He didn't say we gave you this suggestion. He said this is a command. This is an apostolic command to people who are born again. They have been washed in the blood of Jesus. They have been saved by grace. All the anointings you can talk about is present here. You are talking about Pastor Paul, an anointed man of God. Peter was there. James, all these great servants of God that are carrying the anointing. And yet, they go on to say, we, he's talking plural, we leaders, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. You see, that's why God told Adam, yes, I've made all this, but I'm telling you, you're going to starve if you don't work. So you must till the ground. You must learn to labor on this earth. So then the earth would then yield its fruit. That tells us that the earth itself takes instructions from those who work on it. The original instructions given to the whole of creation was that when man works, you yield your cooperation. So the earth obeys that instruction. That's why when you work to put anything in the ground, it will start producing fruit. And how you work at it will determine the quality of fruit that will come out. So the Bible says, we gave you this command that those unwilling to work will not get to eat. There are some people, they are unwilling to work. And then he goes on to say, yet we hear. 
even though we have given you this commandment, yet we are hearing that some of you are living idle lives. Refusing to work. See, it's not that they don't have a job. That they are not applying for a job. But they are just refusing to work. There are some people, they just refuse to work. And they meddle in other people's business. See, the devil finds work for idle people. And most of the time, some of the people that don't do serious work, they meddle in other people's business. They gossip a lot about other people. Their work is, have you seen? Have you heard? That's their, their mantra. Have you seen? Have you heard? Look at her skirt. Look at her shoe. This is that. Have you heard about that marriage? Oh, you see, a quest marriage. <laughs> have you heard about it? Uh, the man is beating her. God forbid in Jesus' name. <laughs> They are struggling that marriage. They are struggling that marriage. After that beautiful wedding, they don't even have a toilet in their house. Is that your business? Focus on your business. So that guy is a very poor man. Yes, she loves a poor man. She has married a poor man. You two focus on your rich man. The Bible says that, yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives refusing to work and meddling in other people's businesses. When you are focused on your work, you will not meddle in other people's business. We command such people and urge them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work to earn their own living. Is that in your Bible? This is New Testament. The apostle writes to the church, it is a command that if you don't work, you will not eat. If you don't work, you will not have results. If you don't work at anything, you will not get the best results you are looking for. The Bible says, yet we are hearing that some of you are living idle lives. I pray for you this evening. As you hear the sound of my voice, refuse to be idle. Even when you don't have a job, work towards getting a job is part of the work. Work towards your CV. Submit yourself to proper teaching, inspiration, encouragement. Go to those that know and let them guide you on how to write a proper CV, how to apply for a job, how to attend an interview. It's all part of the work. You are working towards a work and not sitting down idle and said the grace of God will do it. The man teaching here is an apostle of grace. If anybody will teach on grace, you are talking about the Apostle Paul. He taught on the grace of God. When he wrote Romans, he was talking grace. By the time he was writing Corinthians, he was talking grace. Galatians, he was talking grace. Philippians, Ephesians, he was talking grace. Paul talked grace throughout and he said, me, myself, he himself, he said that he's a product of grace. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Paul understood the grace of God. He started his epistles by saying, grace be to you. He ended them by saying, grace be to you. And he understood that grace will not work without work. So he himself was writing here and said, anyone who does not work, this is a command. Then they will not be able to eat. And it says that when you don't work honestly, you will meddle in other people's business. Church, mind your own business. Amen. Don't spend your energy working on other people's business. Focus on yourself. See, if you are really focused on your assignment, it will take a bystander to tell you that you are digging a, a crooked trench. You won't see it. You are focused on the thing. You don't have time to criticize other people. You just focus on your work. Mind your own business tonight. In Jesus' name. We command such, verse 12, it's a commandment again. We command such people and add them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and work. He didn't say settle down and let the grace work. The grace of God will work when we work. Hallelujah. I want you to understand the power of the grace of God. I have written on the grace of God. I know what the favor of God can do. But I'm telling you by the word of the Lord that the grace or the favor of God works when we work. When God told Moses 
that I'm about to take Israel out of the promised land, out of Egypt to the promised land, the Bible says God said in Exodus chapter 12 that and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and they will give unto them all that they require. God then said to Moses, tell the people to go to the Egyptians and ask for the gold. That was work. They could have stayed in their rooms. God's principle doesn't work like that. You see that he's still doing the same thing from the beginning. It must take some effort. Some effort to go and make the request. It was when they went that the people gave to them. The mission was culturally impossible. You can't go to the home of those who are bereaved to ask for gold and to ask for silver and to have your choice of what you wanted. And the Bible tells us that each of them went to the home of these Egyptians in which there is every form of mourning and, and, and crying because all firstborns had died. And the Bible said they went. And when they went, the favor worked. God said, I will give them grace. I will give them favor in the sight of the Egyptians. That grace only worked when they went to the Egyptians. If they stayed in their rooms, grace won't work. If you don't apply for the job, grace for being accepted will not work. You can't just sit down and expect manna ceased as soon as Israel entered the promised land. Manna ceased. They had to work for it. They had to work for it. So understand the principles of operations of this God. They settled down and to work to end their own living. Church, we can't break through in life without working hard. Amen. Now, in John chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus spoke and said, My father has been working until now, and I have also been working. Amen. You will realize that when it came to the salvation of humans, Jesus did not sit in heaven. And by the principles of remote control, deliver us. He came down from heaven and labored on the earth and worked his way to the cross. The Bible says he moved from village to village, city to city. And he says, for this purpose, I have also come to preach the gospel there also. So he was in Capernaum, in Judea, in all those places, it is work. Gathering 12 men, feeding them, teaching them, gathering apostles and disciples and teaching them, this is work. The Bible says he worked so hard that one day he was so tired that when they were crossing the sea, he was asleep on a boat. He was tired. He was tired. You can't be tired if you have not worked. Jesus labored. The Bible says that he worked so hard. He worked throughout the night. He preached throughout the night. He, he prayed throughout the night. He preached during the day. He got up a great while before day. When he got to the cross, it was hard work. It was hard work to die on the cross to save humanity. So if the father has been working, and now we are told God the son also tells us clearly in plain terms. This is why you don't need revelation. He says, my father has been working until now and I have been working. God has been working. God the son has been working. It means that if, they, if the Godhead understands work and they came on the earth and worked, it means that the thing on the earth for success is work. It's work. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Let me take you through some scriptures and then I will share a few things with you. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23 to 24. It says, work brings profit. Hallelujah. Work brings profit. If you want to have any form of profit, work is the key. Work. If you want to have profit in the ministry, work. Paul said, I have labored with my hands. He said, I've labored with my hands. He worked so hard. The apostles worked. Jesus worked. So when it comes to the ministry, the Bible tells us that works brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Mere talk. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Do it. I'm going to do will not bring the profit. Doing it brings the profit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to do it. We have announced a lot of manifestos, but we don't do. You have told a lot of people the things you want to do this year. We, we are about to enter the sixth month. Start doing them. The Bible says 
Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. Verse 24, wealth is a crown for the wise. You know, Proverbs chapter 6, the scripture tells us that steady from the ant, you lazy bones. It's a study from the ant who labors during summer. Because even the ant knows by foresight that winter will be coming very soon. And it knows itself that it is unable to move in winter because the cold will kill it. The rain will take it away. All anything wet and cold is not good for it. That's when they go under and hide deep in the earth. And then they eat all that they work for during summer. Even ant. It doesn't need a meteorologist to know. It has gotten to know that there is a summer and there is a winter. And the Bible says, go to the ant, you lazy bones. The old King James says, you sluggard. <laughs> go and learn its ways. It says, it has no overseer. It has no supervisor. And yet, it wakes up every morning and goes to work. Sometimes you observe them in summer. You see them going out and making their tunnels in the, in the ground and working hard and, and you see some white things at the tip of their mouth and they are moving. They are moving a lot of goods to store. They are working so hard because there's a time coming when the night will come and no man will be able to work. There's a winter in everybody's life. And the Bible says that wealth is a crown for the wise because just like the ant, the Bible says it is a wise animal. The effort of fools yields only foolishness. What a scripture. The effort of fools. May you not fall within the classification of a fool. Because the Bible says it only yields foolishness. But the wealth, of, the wealth is a crown for the wise. And work brings profit. Work will bring profit. What are you working at tonight? What have you been called to do? What has been the mission of your life? Every aspect of your life that we want to see success, I want you to understand it comes with work. Don't forget Proverbs 14, 23. Work brings profit. Work brings profit. If you are not having profit, ask yourself, how well are you working? Sitting down and wishing for things, it, that is not work. It's just one step. Dreaming is one step. You have to write it down. And I remember in secondary school, we, we were taught that if wishes were horses, beggars would ride them. <laughs> but nothing great is achieved without labor. Amen. And I'm talking about honest labor. Glory be to Jesus. Look at Jeremiah 17, 11. I'm talking about honest labor because you can't have shortcuts in life. Work brings profit. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by the right means. It will leave him in the midst of his days and at his end he will be a fool. A partridge is a big bird. It says just as that bird sits on eggs and is unable to hatch them, so is the person who gets riches by wrong means. It will leave him. The riches will fly away in the midst of his years. And at his end, he will be a fool. The New Living Translation says, like a patriot that hatches eggs she has not laid. She's hatching eggs he haven't laid. He didn't lay the egg. He's trying to hatch it. That's a thief and a robber. Trying to find shortcuts in life. The profit for all thieves is death. Like a patry that hatches eggs she has not laid, so are those who get their wealth by unjust means. At midlife, they will lose their riches. In the end, they will become poor old fools. My God. Jeremiah 17, 11, New Living Translation. Frame it very big and put it in your living room. Let it remind you. Like a partridge that hatches eggs she has not laid. Don't hatch any egg you didn't lay. Labor for it, and the profit will be enduring. So are those who get their wealth by unjust means. 
May you honestly labor. May you honestly work so that you get profit that belongs to you. Because at midlife, they will lose their riches. This is a scripture. It's a word of God. All those who steal things, their end is not always good. At midlife, they will lose their riches. In the end, they will become poor old fools. Is everything all right? Amen. So you see, Paul also says, let me finish this last scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 9 to 10. As I said earlier on, that grace works with work. The apostle Paul writes and says, For I am the least of the apostles, and I'm not even worthy to be called as of God. I am what I am. And his grace towards me was not in vain. But I labored. Have you seen it there? Labor is a very strong word for work. I labored more abundantly than they all. He's referring to the other apostles. Yet it wasn't I, but the grace of God which was with me enabled me to work. So even when we receive grace, we receive grace to help us to work so that we can have more grace. Paul said, this man, he met Jesus Christ. For him, no human preached to him to be born again. Jesus Christ himself got him born again on the way to Damascus. I mean, don't you think that someone with such an experience can just relax and his church will start growing? But the principle of working must be maintained, must be followed. It doesn't change. He also understood that I can, in fact, this is a man who has been to heaven. He's been to the third heavens. He's seen stuff. He has seen Jesus Christ. And yet he says, I labored abundantly. I labored. As he labored, the grace was working. Amen. So when he, he won't sit down and say, I wish I have a church in Corinth. No, he physically moved to Corinth. I wish I have a church in Philippi. No, he went there himself. For days he was preaching. And some of the work, every work has got occupational hazards. For the ministry, you will be criticized and beaten, stoned. It's part of the work. It's part of the work. Yes. If you want everybody to applaud you, go and sell ice cream. Don't do, don't do ministry. Don't do leadership. Don't be a leader. <laughs> Paul was beaten by many people. Stoned for preaching. That is hard work. And the Bible tells us, sometimes when you have time, read about Paul. They will stone him and half dead. They drop him in a basket. And he will just get up. With all the sores around him. Sometimes I try to, to picture it in my mind. This man had been to a place and they beat him well, well. And the Bible says they left him half dead. They believe he was dead. When he recovered, immediately he started preaching. The Bible says immediately he started preaching. I'm just thinking, this guy with all the bruises on him, as he just came out of his unconscious state, he said, hey, where am I? Ha, huh? oh. Look at the source. Hey, hey, who is passing by? Stand here. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? He started preaching. With all the pain. Anywhere you put him, he will preach. In prison, he was preaching. He was laboring in preaching. In prison. And we could see all his books. Most of his books were written from prison. Today we sit in air-conditioned places and we write books. In, on carpets. With laptops. And we are typing away. The guy was writing with a feather. Dip it in ink and one run, 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 run line and it finishes and dips it again and writes all that we enjoy today. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, all those things he was writing. First and Second Timothy, he was writing. He was laboring and the grace was working. And the ministries under him were growing. Ladies and gentlemen, the anointing is one level. You must work and then the anointing grows. That's how the anointing grows. You can't bottle the anointing in. The anointing works when we work. Not I, but the grace of God which was with me. He said, I labored more abundantly. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the ministry, we need to understand that we must work at the ministry. Hallelujah. All of us who are believers, we have been called into ministry. 
if we will grow the work of the ministry, maybe your department, you're going to sit down and really think, really plan, really strategize. The work of the ministry calls for excellent organization. You need organizational skills. And it's not easy. It doesn't come by wishes. Sometimes you must intentionally allow yourself to be schooled in how to organize people. Sometimes you need to take a course. Or you have to learn from those who have excelled in that area. And making yourself available even to be taught itself is work. Hallelujah. Anything, we all want to see beautiful things. Don't we want to see beautiful things? Jesus worked hard to have thousands of people in his church. If you see somebody having thousands of people in their church, it's a lot of work has gone into it. Even the fake ones, they have worked hard. Because it's a lot of work to really deceive people. It's it's a ministry, it's a serious ministry to deceive people. (laughs) I don't know how to pretend, I don't know how. But it's people, that's a lot of hard work to be a pretender. Yeah. To be a pretender. To be using Satan's power and still call the name of Jesus is a very powerful enterprise. They are working hard. Though their reward will not be in heaven. (laughs) But they are having some kind of resource because the earth has been commanded to respond to hard work. Amen. So when it comes to the work of the ministry, I just want to understand that sometimes laziness, lack of interest, loss of interest, People's behavior, all those things. Don't let it put you off. You need to work hard to overcome people's negative behavior in the ministry and in the department. It's a hard work. It's part of the work. If you, if you don't know how to overcome that barrier, your ministry will not grow even though you are anointed. And I'm starting off with ministry because I'll come down to all your various levels of life. Amen. Anything beautiful you see has been produced from hard work. If you have been by the side of lakes and, you know, water bodies and um, streams, you see swan. You know swan? You see a swan gliding by so nicely and it's on the river or on the stream. But I want you to know the swan you see gliding by so gracefully is paddling rapidly beneath the surface. It is paddling rapidly beneath the surface. It's two feet is moving very fast, but you are just seeing some beautiful thing gliding. So oh, look at it, see how it's moving. It is not a current moving, it is gliding so hard, it's working so hard beneath the surface. Every success you see today, something is behind the scenes. Some labor has gone in, some pain has gone in, and then we see the beautiful reward of it. Sometimes when you stand and see the aircraft. In the sky. It looks like, look at her, it's nice. But the engine is moving. Something is going on. Nothing works without work. Amen. So when it comes to these things, as we have seen from the word of God, you will notice that if it comes to ministry, we need to be organized. Amen. You need to maintain standards through hard work. You must work hard. When people change, you change the statics. You have to work hard. You have to, you, once you are working with people, people will change. But don't, don't let their change affect the quality of standards in the place. Sometimes you have to work hard in looking at how do you overcome this attitude of lack of desire and interest and lack of commitment in the department that you are leading. It's work. You have to think through. When you sit down, you are even thinking. Thinking itself is work. And if you have to pray for wisdom, prayer itself is work. You want to see work? We're talking about prayer. Not the one we pray over food. That one is very easy. Everyone can pray that prayer. So long as they see food, their prayer grace comes up. Blessed, blessed. Father, we thank you for this food. Bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Three seconds prayer, they finished. I'm talking about the two-hour prayer, the three-hour prayer, the one-hour prayer. Intense prayer is hard work. 
is hard work. If you want to see the power of God and the hand of God, and to be able to receive from God, there's a depth you must go in prayer. So if you want to have excellent ministries and departments, I want you to understand it is hard work. And as the ministry grows, the work increases. Because the result of hard work is more work. <laughs> the result of hard work is more work. Because if you, if, you, if you have three people in your department and you work so hard and they become 30, you have to work hard in preparing rota, in teaching them, in organizing them, in making sure that everything is running. People will start beating each other in the department. You have to work towards all of those. When it's three people, you can manage them. When 30 people are not talking to themselves and they must all come and sing in the choir, you have a work to do. How do you get them all gelling together when they have disagreements? So you see, the more you have, the more the work. Now, if you have 300 members in the choir, you're going to have a lot of work to do. So the result of hard work is more work. Amen. And it is people organization. So you must learn organization. You must intentionally focus on that. Sometimes you must read about it and it is work. It is work. So that when people see your ministry gliding by, they don't just think, oh, look at that beautiful thing. See the move of God. <laughs> Under it, there is a serious paddling going on. Amen. Amen. When it comes to your relationships, I want you to understand you must work at it. Whenever you see beautiful relationships, beautiful premarital relationships, beautiful marital relationships, I want you to understand it is not donated by an anointing. Hands can be laid, but that's not what is producing that one. When hands are laid and you don't work at it, the anointing will not work. The anointing works when we work. Hallelujah. We don't lay hands on empty heads. When we put our hands on you, the anointing comes upon you because there's something already you are working at. God found David, his servant. He was already seven. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I have found David, my servant. And with my holy oil have anointed him to move to the next level. Jesus found the fishermen. They were already fishing. They have some skill. Now he anoints them and says, you are not going to you know, transport the same skill towards catching men. The skill of catching fish, you're going to use the same way to catch men. Paul was doing something when Jesus found him. He was very zealous, going around from city to city. If you can move from city to go and persecute my people, I will turn it around. You will work from city to city to promote my kingdom. And the Bible says, as he passed by the place of HMRC, he saw Matthew sitting down at the place of custom, receiving taxes, and he called him too. So you know how to do accounting. Good one. You're going to account for souls now. Transfer it into the thing. The transferable skills. Move it in. Everyone was doing something when the Lord called them. Elisha was doing something and God said to Elijah, go and look for Elisha, the son of shepherd. And then he threw the mantle at him and said, follow me. The man was already taking care. He was a great business guy. He has a lot of oxen. He has a big farm. He said, transfer the same skills towards the work of the ministry because it is the same work. Organization. You can't be organized if you don't work hard at organization skills. Everything we do in this world is organization. God organized everything so beautifully. But the work he came to do was organization. He first organized things by making sure the sun came. Then the trees came. He organized everything. Before humans were created, God organized everything. Before the seas went to the sea. It's not like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, look at the fish. Hey, where would they be? Oh, now let me do this. No, he put the water there first before he commanded it to produce the fish. So whatever God did, in summary, was organization. If we will work, let's work hard at our organizing skills. Don't say God has called me. He's going to do everything. No, if you see a growing church, you will see a lot of organization inside it. Amen. So work at your relationships. Sometimes you need to read about it. 
expand your knowledge and start applying them. We are all not the same. Every relationship, every marriage is like the thumbprint. It looks the same, but it's not the same. Sometimes you must intentionally study the person you are marrying and find out things from them because they are different. Just like you are also different. Amen. It is when people have understood these things about themselves, then they work at the relationship and it becomes fruitful. God knows us. He has studied us. He made us. He says, I know your frailty. You are but dust and ashes. He knows us. What do you know about the person you want to marry? What do you know about the person you are married to? Marriages will not work because we place our hands on you. Marriages will work because you decided to study each other and then the anointing after the hands have been laid will begin to work. So sometimes you need to get books on marriage and read about it. Read from others who have also become successful. Study is work. It's work to go and ask somebody a question about their marriage. It's work to sit down and read. Many of us, we don't like reading. In fact, a lot of people's marriages are struggling and the answer is in a book that is on their shelf for the past 10 years. But they have not opened it. Chapter 3 is there, but you have not been reading it. You don't know. That is what is going to work for you. The laziness to read. We don't want to read. But as you are born again, I pray in Jesus' name as Paul said, I command you to start working. And reading is work. Reading is work. You get exposed to stuff. So sometimes you need to work hard. To change your own attitude. That's where the problem is. It's not a demon anymore. As for demons, the devil, we can deal with him. But sometimes it's your attitude that is making the marriage very difficult. Your attitude. And nobody can change you. You have to change you. So sometimes you need to be very honest with yourself. After sitting down, working hard at thinking, praying, and reading, you may come across something that says, oh, I think, I think it's me. And then you realize, I know, but you've had 23 years of experience with this attitude. How do you change it in two days? How do you change it in six months? So you start working hard towards changing it. Maybe your problem is that you don't know how to appreciate anything. So you don't know how to say please and thank you. Those things are not in your vocabulary. We have to pray them into you. So the only reason why you're having problem in your relationship is that the other half has issues with this unthankful behavior that you don't express. Now you must intentionally work hard at learning to say thank you. So you must work hard at, at it. You must find someone to always remind you. You must have a good friend, an accountability relationship who will be texting you to say, have you said thank you today? Until gradually you get over it. Amen. Sometimes your spouse will say, you are shouting too much. He said, but I'm not shouting. He said, you are, you are shouting because you don't hear yourself. Sometimes record yourself and see whether you would like to be talked to the way you are talking. Then you begin to learn the lesson. It's hard work. So when you see beautiful marriages, see, I don't like pretense. I don't know how to do it. So me, you can see, clear. when I'm not happy, you can see it. You can see it easily. Yes. And when I'm happy too, you can see it. So I don't want to walk with my wife in town and we are holding our hands and it's like a beautiful marriage. When you, whatever you see is real. Whatever you see is real there, it's real. That's how we live. We, are work, we work hard on it says I'm a man of God. No, I'm a human being first. She's also a human being. So we, we study some few things. So we can work at this. And then we begin to see results. And then it begins to attract a lot of people. But remember, the swan is gliding with hard work. And it's passing cool like that. <laughs> Relationships. Many times, a lot of people are say, oh, maybe God didn't put us together. God put you together. You must work hard at the thing to have the results that you want to see. Amen. Sometimes you have to work at tolerance. You can't have your way all the time. The days where you have your way, you get up and go out without telling anybody. That's when you are single. But the moment you become married, you have to understand you have entered into another zone. You work hard in that area. Sometimes you see some children have turned out very good. Say, oh, your children are very respectful. 
Hard work. No child just becomes respectful. They were all born in sin. It takes hard work and grace. So hard work to teach because the home, you immediately must understand your home is an educational institution. And that makes you a principal, vice chancellor, pro vice chancellor, lecturer, parents, this is, this is you. So you, you must have proper lessons going on, well structured. Children are serious business. It's not for children. Wherefore shall a man, not a boy, leave his mother and father and be cleaved to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. It means you have to work hard. Work hard. Sometimes the working hard is not only teaching virtues of life, but working hard in intercession. Because you have to understand that whilst you are providing training in your house, these days is even more complicated. Because there are a lot of trainers on the iPad. There are a lot of professors on the iPad. They are on the iPhones. They are on the, all the gadgets. And when they get out of the house, they meet some guys at school who also share some things with them. So some of them, that's where you begin to work hard at structured intercession. <laughs> there must be an intercession in the life of a parent that is only praying for the child. That's a different one. We have prayed for church. We finished that one at 5 a.m. 5 to 6, we finished that one. There must be a separate one that you are doing for those children. That you are praying for them to be influenced by the power of the Holy Spirit. To, 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 that the things you have taught them, they will remember it. It will be retained. They will be able to practice it. You must pray it into them. It's not just fun. To see some children turn out well and they are doing things and they are serving God. Let me tell you, intercessions have gone in. Entities have been confronted. Powers of darkness have been dealt with. Sometimes you have prayed even for their future wives and spouses. You, have, you are interceding on that. You, this is serious work. So when we see the swan gliding by, it didn't just come cheap. God toiled six days. Six long days. No break. When I was working in the hospital, it, it, it shocked me. Well, when I was in Ghana, it's but we here in the United Kingdom. It shocked me that people could take cigarette break. <laughs> ah. And she's outside smoking. <laughs> she's got 10 minutes of that to smoke. <laughs> Charlie, and tea break and things like that. I wasn't brought up with tea break. So when they asked me if I'm not taking tea break, I said no. I, I, it's not part of me. Give me rice break. <laughs> Kenke break. Yeah. But if they're smoking, smoking break. My God. <laughs> we have to pray that anything that you don't want to see must not happen. So as a parent, sometimes there's a prayer you're praying the day, but there's a day in the week that your intercession and fasting is calling the name of that child, those children, and praying. It's work. Oh, please, it's work. <laughs> it's work. That's when the Netflix is calling you. You have to tell Netflix, you must obey me. Netflix, who are you when my children start going wayward? What can you do? You put it off. That's why you're a human being. Sometimes I say that to the remote. I say, that is why I am a human being and you are just a device. I put you off. Now, if you, if you annoy me, I'm just going to lock you in a room and you are not coming down here. And I put the TV off from the source. So it's too difficult when you switch it on. You have a lot of process for it to go through before it comes on. It's not going to be quick. Because the, the remote itself has been imprisoned somewhere in the house. Somewhere. So you can focus and pray. It's hard work. And when you see anything that is not right, you judge the timing to correct it. You must speak. Don't keep quiet. And it's work. It's work. So when you start seeing other people's children turn out and looking good, people, <laughs> it's not easy. It's work. Don't you see in the word of God? That some children of great servants of God go wayward. 
Samuel's children didn't turn out well. Read the scriptures. You didn't see them, boy. Eli's children didn't turn out well. David has some crazy stuff in his house. He's working at something else, but he's not working on the home front to deal with some issues. Jacob, even when he said his sons shouldn't go and touch the family of Shechem, they still went. They went to murder some guys. Trouble in every home. We didn't hear Moses' children coming to the ministry. So this thing is hard work. Amen. When you're in a relationship, study about each other. They say, we, 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 we are going out. As I've told you, you must be coming in. And we are going out. We are studying each other. I keep asking, where's the curriculum? Sit down and write out the things you are studying so we can assess it and see whether we can give you better, better particulars. What are you studying about her? Her eyes and hair? But I'm not a cosmetologist. You need to be studying about character. And that's a lot of work to do. Sit down and analyze things. Is this the man I want to spend the rest of my life with? Have you been to their house? Do you know his father? Do you know the relationship that exists between the father and the children and the wife and etc. in the house? Have you done this homework? Oh, the Lord has given me John. You are not serious. The Lord has given you John. You must work hard at John. Otherwise, John will be John. Are you here? Glory be to Jesus. So you need to work hard. You need to read about marriage and relationships. You need to seek counseling. You also need expert opinion. Sometimes you must attend a seminar on the matter. And seek God also in prayer. When it comes to preaching... We want to be excellent in that as well. But I want you to understand that anointing is one level. You need to work hard to perfect the art of communication because preaching is communication. Preaching is the highest level of communication because, you see, when you look at ordinary earthly presidents and prime ministers and, and monarchs, you will see they've got spokespersons. Those people are skillful communicators. Sometimes you need a master's degree in mass communication to qualify to become a government spokesperson in certain jurisdictions. And so when we have to be spokespersons on behalf of the king of kings and lord of laws, we need to perfect our communication skills. Because I found out from experience that you can be talking and yet not communicating. You can be talking, choppy, 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 and you're making no sense. When you connect your computer to the printer, whether your phone, etc., remotely, when you click on print or you order print, you should, a few seconds or minutes, you should hear a click. And then you know that they are talking. But if you ordered for one print and the printer prints out 30, there's a problem with the communication. So you have actually spoken, but you have not communicated. If you communicate it clearly, it must be to the understanding of the other. Then we say communication has taken place. Otherwise, you have spoken, but the person did not understand. So when it comes to preaching the gospel, we have been called to preach, but I want you to understand that you must intentionally allow yourself to be schooled in the art of communicating the gospel of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we can go to evangelism and God may hand us thousands of souls and we never get any of them born again because we are not making sense. We are just using jargons that they don't understand. See, charismatics and Pentecostals, we've got a lot of jargons. Glory. Power. Man, the service was powerful. But to the unsaved, power and glory makes no sense. It's like going out to the streets and speaking to unbelievers and saying, we're going to have a Holy Ghost super move. What is that one? Recently, I saw something very funny. <laughs> uh, it's a flyer. It's a church, church in Ghana. He said they are doing prophetic endoscopy. What? <laughs> prophetic endoscopy. I said, my God, I'm sure that they have been doing a lot of sort of, sort of scopies. 
scopes. Ah, endoscopy. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a procedure in which when you are having XX acid or you're having maybe a stomach ulcer or peptic ulcer or uh, duodenitis and all those things, they run a camera down your throat uh, to look into your tummy. And this man is doing a prophetic endoscopy. <laughs> I don't know whether he heard the word and he thought he can apply it on a flyer. But you, you immediately make those who know ridicule the church. Because you see, you are not communicating correctly. I mean, who in his right mind, who have studied, will really come to this? Prophetic endoscopy. <laughs> yeah, have you seen some of those flyers? It's very crazy. <laughs> I think there was another one too from Nigeria. It's, Give me my wife now or I die. I mean, can you imagine? That's the theme. That's the theme for the convention. That's what Dickin Charles should have attended that one. <laughs> Give me my wife or I die. Second, how can, you, how can you have such a thing? And this is on Facebook. There are some strange themes. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to learn the art of communication. Even if you need to get a book to read. I know a great man of God in Ghana. Today, many people listen to him. His churches are all over the world now. As he himself admitted, when it comes to the GCSE, he failed all. Except art. That he passed. Everything. Maths, English, everything. Nine. Those days, you know, in our days, when you have nine, you are failed. Because ours is the reverse. So you have one. One is, yeah, you have one. Then you have, you have really blown it. <laughs> one, two, three. At least that's where you should be hanging. Five is credit. <laughs> From six, you are entering dangerous zone. So if you have nine, you have nine in chains. You have failed completely. Good measure, press down, shaking together, run you over. You can't go to six form. And he had nine in chains, except art. But as he started his church, Today, a university has come out of it. Great ministries. And I have one of our childhood friends as we were all growing up in, in God. I mean, she, she served him in his house when he got married. So she was one of the girls that served. And another gentleman who was my friend as well. And he, those days, was saying, hey, he has sent me to go and buy this book. The art of public speaking. The art of this. The art of this. So he bought those books. And behind the scenes, he was studying. So today, when he stands out and he's speaking... You wonder what is happening here. He intentionally schooled himself. He never went to CIS form, never went to any university. He's a chancellor of a university now. You can't give an excuse. You have got many means of actually studying. Because he realized that the only thing he has is the ability to communicate the gospel so that people will be willing to hear him. And if there are books on the art of communication, the art of public speaking, get them. So that when you are speaking, you know how to conduct yourself and communicate effectively. So that we can preach with power and yet also preach so clearly to the understanding of the people. What's the point in carrying power and the people don't understand anything you said? They will not be able to respond to the message. If you look at the message Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, it wasn't any complicated message. So simple. But I believe that the communication was so clear. And he spoke in Hebrew to the understanding of the people that were listening to him. May we learn that in Jesus' name. So work hard to perfect the art of communication. And the same thing with your relationships. Learn the art of communication in relationships. When it comes to soul winning, work hard at reaching out to people. Sometimes you need to intentionally work hard at steadying the fish and the pond. When I'm training our leaders, I teach them about steadying the fish and the pond. Because Jesus has told us that we are to be fishers of men. There are certain group of people, if you want to win them, you know there's a particular time of the day that they come out. You study the pond. That means you study the community. You understand a few things about the community. Paul did this many times in Athens. He even knew the poetry of the people. He knew when he communicates with them and made reference to an unknown God that they have been serving. Paul studied even the literature of the place. So that when he started engaging them, he wasn't ignorant of their cultures. Sometimes we have missed it big time because we don't spend time to work hard at studying the culture of a place. And we just think we can just impose God on them. It becomes difficult because we are not studying. May we work hard at that. 
Whatever God has called us to do, there must be some hard work. Jesus knew the history of his people. Many times he would make statements and say, the tower, of, the tower that fell on the people. That means that he knew something about the history. He studied about things. Remember one day he was teaching, he says that you can't put new wine into old wine skin. Where did he learn those things from? He's not a drunkard. But he has to study something about brewery. He knew about wine skins and what an old wine skin and a new wine, what kind of things would take place. He also said that you can't put a new cloth and patch it on an old cloth. It will tear it off. I mean, was he not a carpenter? When did he learn tailoring? But he has studied a few things. He understands the culture of the people. In some cultures, they don't mind anything wherever you do with your hand gestures, but there are some places you can't be pointing the left hand. It's already seen and frowned upon. So anything you are preaching, is don't listen. This guy doesn't respect. That's all that's going on in their head. And it's hard work. You need to spend time to do this thing. So we have been called to win souls. But I want us to work hard at reaching out to people, studying the fish and the pond. Studying the people. Where do they normally gather? That's the fish. Look at the pond carefully. What times is it ripe for the people to be gathering around it? What time of the day is the best time to actually throw the the, the net into, into it. Peter and his friends, they were, they were fishing all night. But this time they caught nothing. But when the king of kings came and the lord of lords came, it doesn't matter. I know you don't normally fish here in the afternoons because you know that the fishes, you can't get them. They see by the sun rays and the refraction. When you throw in the bait, they see it so they go away. That's why in the night they are actually fishing. In some places, you cut them in the day. Others in the night. You need to steady the terrain so that you can have results. Amen. When it comes to academic excellence, we all want to excel academically, but I want you to know that the anointing doesn't just work because pastor laid hands on you. You must sit down and read. Read wide. You must attend lectures and listen. See, the danger in these days is, oh, now it's online. It's online. Even online, attend the lectures online. Don't read. Don't, otherwise, you'll be reading non sila What is not in the syllabus? non sila Because you said, oh, they said this book. But then when the lecturer is teaching, you'll be able to hear and understand that he's actually coming from a particular angle. It's one thing to read a book on your own. It's another thing if the author is the one teaching you. The understanding is different. So let's not hide behind the internet and say, oh, I've attended the lecture. Oh, I know all that. I'll just not to read. Please. They, they also know that you can do what you are doing. But that's why a lecturer is still going to stand there and be lecturing and knows that only three people have logged on. And he knows that 100 students have not logged on. You are not helping yourself. Pay the price. Have the priorities right. Be a child of God. Attend that lecture. Record it. When you finish, listen to it over and over. Sometimes you are busy about unnecessary things. Plan your day well. It is part of work. Schedule well. Sit down. Listen to the lecture. And then study. We read first. Then we study. There are two different levels. There are skills for passing exams. Ask those who have been there. They will share with you. It is when you do all this that God then will bless. Amen. That's how he has organized the earth. You know, sometimes we, we are very spiritual and I love to be very spiritual. I don't like anybody to reduce my spirituality. Say so you are too spiritual. We have to be too spiritual. But if we are spiritual... We have to understand that it goes with wisdom. Because the most spiritual entity on the face of the earth, God Almighty, was also a great planner. And he works very hard. Jesus said, my father works. And I am also working. And yet, he is God the son. Amen. So we, you know, sometimes you find Christians quote the scripture. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance. Oh. That you have been taught. Yes, it's true. 
but it will bring something to your remembrance. That means something must be there for you to be remembered or to be reminded on. Something must be there. And that means that you must intentionally work hard at sitting down. Sitting down and reading is hard work, but you must sit down. There are a lot of shortcuts around these days. Please don't cut short. Anytime you, you, you do shortcuts, you get an accident. And you may get lost. Sometimes because we are going somewhere and we think we know the way and there's traffic and let me pass here and pass here and pass here. And sometimes you, you dodge and you find yourself in the most thickest of traffic than the one you are trying to avoid. One day I was traveling back to Kumasi from Obwasi. And as we were approaching Kumasi, we realized that there was such a heavy traffic. And I was in a hurry to get to where I'm getting to. So the driver said, he knows the way. He said, okay, fine. Pass here. He said, I will pass here. Pass. Everywhere he passed, we rather got locked and locked and locked. And it finally took us five hours. Five hours. And I learned a lesson. Sometimes in life, you must learn the lessons of life. Solomon said, I returned and I observed <laughs> that this is vanity. He said, I passed by the field of the slothful and I learned a lesson. So yeah, we're in a hurry. Eventually, whatever we have to do, we abandon it because I mean, <laughs> if you have, you are approaching, I mean, Obasi to Kumasi should not take you more than an hour. If there's no traffic. And here we are trying to cut corners Shortcuts are dangerous. We ended up in this traffic. We said, let's pass here. Say, oh, it's free here. We pass here. Oh, traffic. We pass here. Tra At another place, we, we nearly even somersaulted a vehicle because we're passing some untarred roads. And I say, please, you know what? Just calm down. Say, if we go back, I say, can we go back? Say, oh, I know some way here. We pass here. Oh, it's all muddy. It's all crazy. Huh? By 4 p.m., we were almost at the edge of Kumasi. Now here we are, 9 p.m., we are still in traffic. I went back, I refused to eat. <laughs> I went to sleep like that. <laughs> I was so tired sitting in traffic like that. <laughs> Please, students, sit down and study. It's a season. It will be over. But when you learn these skills, you'll be able to apply it as you rise and as you grow up. The higher you go, the more there will be the need to sit down. Many times we don't like to sit down because it feels like it's boring. But that's discipline. Sit down and read and make your research on the subject. Pay the price. Then God will command blessing in the name of Jesus. Please look at this scripture finally. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 as I end the message tonight. I think I've spoken a lot. But I believe you have been blessed. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 12. Please take note of God Almighty speaking. And so, if we don't work, sometimes you're looking for the blessing, the anointing. I've been telling you, look at how God himself does things. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. This is God speaking himself directly to Moses and say, this is what I will do. The heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. Have you seen it? God blesses the work of your hand. You are looking for blessing. What work have you done? When we do the work, then he commands his blessing upon the work you did. When you work on the relationship, God will command his blessing to make it beautiful. When we work on the academic, when we work on the books, then God will command his blessing to make us have retentive memory. So when we get into the exam room, we'll be able to produce exactly what will satisfy the examiners. When we work on our ministries, then God will command blessing upon the work of the ministry. As we become faithful in teaching two people, God will find us faithful and add two more people to the church. It is he that adds to the church, such as should be saved. When we work on our communication, God will command a lot of people to want to listen to you. He says, I will command my blessing upon the work of your hands. Tonight, what have you been working hard? What have you been working at? 
In all the areas of your life, I pray that you work hard. I want wherever you are to lift your voice and begin to pray and ask God to help you. Banish laziness from you. Banish every spirit of procrastination and laziness. Excuses. Otherwise, you remain the same way and you just keep on having wishes. But it doesn't work that way. Every Christian must work hard. When you go into politics, it's a very good area to go into. But don't steal. Work. Work honestly. Let God himself provide a reward. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes as you work hard and you are promoted in the workplace, don't cut corners. The very thing that brought you to that level of promotion, keep working hard at it and the door for your higher levels of promotion will continue to open. God will begin to let his favor speak over your life. What have been fighting your labor so far? What have you not been working hard at? What have you become lazy at? Tonight I want you to pray, Lord help me in the name of Jesus. Some of you, it's a relationship. This one comes and goes. This lady comes and goes. This man comes and goes. Sometimes you need to sit down. Read about it. Seek counsel. Look at something. Ah, for the devil, we can deal with him. Sometimes, even if it's the devil, you are not working hard enough in prayer. You just think by running from one prophet to the other, then the breakthrough will come. It doesn't come like that. You need to work hard because you are not going to marry a spirit. You're going to marry a human being who are tastes. Somebody pray in the name of Jesus. Pray over that ministry, that department you are leading. That church, that branch you are leading. How hard have you been working towards personnel organization, departmental organization? How hard are you working towards making, moving the people to have commitment and dedication to the work of God? What are you putting together? What is in your notes? What is your strategic plan? Sometimes you need to lock yourself in a room and plan throughout. Planning itself is hard work. God is a great planner. Oh yes. Maso beri andala baba shakata. Le robo sikri andala lebe sibora bala baba. Somebody lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Pray the Lord help me in Jesus name. Help me to do honest labor. Let me do a correct assessment of my situation. In any area that you want to excel. Like I just told you. The movement of a swan. On that stream. Is undergirded by very active paddling. Lako sibron delelebebe shabranda lababa. That's one you see gliding by so gracefully. is paddling rapidly beneath the surface. The children you want to see so gracefully. How much of the paddling have you been doing behind the surface? That wife you want to see so gracefully. Loving you and caring. That man you want to see so gratefully, so nice around you and your home. How much are you paddling gracefully behind the scenes? Lebron de ketere baba, lemorande lele mesi baraba la malama ba. That church you want to see grow. How much work are we putting in in evangelism? How much commitment, investment are we putting into it? How much of us are going to be available to see that result? That works with the work. You need to apply for that job. Attend that interview and get the job. Work at it. God says he will command blessing upon the work of your hands. We want to see blessings, but we don't want to do the work. It doesn't work that way. Tonight, I pray that the word of God has come to open your understanding. In the name of the Lord Jesus. A working home, a beautiful marriage doesn't just happen. It is worked out. A beautiful relationship doesn't just happen. It is worked out. 
a beautiful church, a growing church, a growing ministry, a united people. It's not easy. It comes by working hard at it. When you see siblings so united, a parent had worked hard in making sure that they stay united. When you see somebody having enough wealth, he has worked hard at self-discipline. You are not just buying anything on impulse. It's hard work to stay disciplined. The night comes when no man can work. Yes, Lord Jesus. Let's sing we must work whilst it is day. that you anoint us to work. Grace us to labor. You said if we will not work, we should not eat. Help us to work. Let there be a fresh desire to work. Let us apply the principles of the word of God and the very nature of God for the very nature of God is to work. The principles he has woven into creation is that we work and creation yield this influence. You have also said in your word that you will command blessing upon the work of our hands. Tonight we ask in Jesus' name, deliver us from foolishness, from laziness, from apathy, from procrastination, from all kinds of excuses in the name of Jesus. Help us to labor in every area of our lives, spiritually, physically, in our relationships, in our academic work, in our workplaces, Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. Help us. We thank you tonight for this word that we shall see results and transformation. And as your people run with this message, let them see results in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's invite Reverend Margaret to lead us to take the offering in Jesus' name. What a powerful word. I hope you were working by taking notes. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to put everything we hear into practice. Amen and amen. Please let's appreciate the servant of God, Bishop James and Sinsaki. What a such, you know, a power-packed word, a timely word. And we have to run with this word in Jesus' name. Everything he said is, for me, is summarized in Deuteronomy. That the Lord will command blessing upon the work of our hands. Work representing working at relationships, working at in ministry, working really hard in our communication skills, working in, in 
everything we do, we have to work hard. Hallelujah. And don't forget, more hard work means what? More hard work. Hallelujah. Amen. One more time, let's appreciate the servant of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are so blessed. We are so blessed. Amen. Amen. Oh, please type in some comments just to encourage the servant of the Lord. That is also work when you decide to write in comments. So go ahead and write some encouraging comments for the servant of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad and thankful to God that we're able to make it tonight. Amen. Amen. So please, wherever you are, prayerfully, let's prepare our offerings in Jesus' name. And we'll pray. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for such a powerful word today that has profited us, O oh God. We are thankful. We thank you, O oh God, also for the opportunity to give, to further your work, O oh God. We pray that as we give prayerfully, I pray, receive our gifts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Sanctify every offering in the name of Jesus. And I pray that, Lord, it shall be used to further your work in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you that Lord tonight you remember everyone that was able to give and the ones that were not able to give also Father you remember them that when the next opportunity comes they'll be able to give to support your work. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's invite back to the pulpit the anointed psalmist to lead us the time of um, songs to take our offerings in Jesus name. Amen.
Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We thank God for how far he has brought us. Anointed psalmist, God bless you. Thank you very much. And the instrumentalists, just really thank you for, for, your, for working tonight. Hallelujah. Really hard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, wherever you are, please, you may take your seats as we listen and observe the following announcements. Hallelujah. Once again, our next... Um, family service is this victory service is this Sunday and it will be held at King Henry School, the old gym, Avenue Road, and the postcode is DA83BN, DA83BN, and service starts at 10 a.m. sharp. And so remember this Sunday is the very last Sunday of May. The Lord has been good. Invite a friend, tell a friend to tell a friend, and let's all come together and worship. We have something good in this house, and let's make noise about it. Amen and amen. And our next teaching service is next Wednesday. Hallelujah. Oh, please show me you're excited about the Wednesday service. Hallelujah. Amen. Again, it will be on YouTube and it's Christ Church HQ, 7 p.m. sharp. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you've all been blessed tonight. I have been blessed and I'm just trusting God that he give us the grace to put everything we've heard into practice. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, please, let's put our hands together as we welcome the servant of God, Bishop James Hansen Saki. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let me leave you with this message. When we were in secondary school, and it's time for exams, after they hand us the question papers and the answer sheets, the teacher says, start work. Tonight, start work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Start work. Shall we pray? The Lord bless you all and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his great countenance on you and give you peace. I pray that the grace to labor shall come on you. And when you do so, may you have results. May the business, as you labor in the business, those of you hearing me tonight who are into business, may there be fruit. As you labor in advertising your businesses, may there be results. In the name of Jesus, in this difficult economic climate, there is the hand of God that turns things around. In the seasons of lack, he provides for his own. I pray may God provide for you. May he make a way where there seems to be no way. As you labor in this climate, may great grace attend to your labor. May God command his blessings upon the work of your hands. The Lord heal your homes. The Lord heal your families. The Lord heal your marriages, your relationships. The Lord accept, cause you to excel academically. Your lying down be blessed and your rising up be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you not labor in vain. You will not labor in vain. You will not labor in vain. May God settle you. May God establish you. May God honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Shall we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. You are blessed with an irrevocable blessing to increase and to influence. Amen and amen. Amen, 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 amen. It is so, it is so. Amen, 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 amen. It is so, it is so. Amen, 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 amen. It is so, 
Yeah.